impressed, or maybe you should be impressed. This is quite the crowd for a Friday afternoon, because um, you're all waiting for the holiday gala, correct? And we're going right. to go into that. We have our holiday Christmas prayer party on campus tonight, so uh, oh, uh, it'll be great. Uh, well, thank you again, especially those that you have been to all three of the uh, uh, open forums this week. I know it's a busy time as we look towards finals week uh, uh, next week, so I appreciate you taking the time uh, to uh, listen to our, our uh, BPAA finals candidate. So we are um, honored to have our final candidate on campus, uh, Dr. Clark Harris, who comes to us right now from um, Mott Community College in Flint, Michigan. Um, and I'm going to go off of your bio here a little okay. bit. Um, he currently serves as the Dean of Technology at Mott Community College and has been there for eight years. Is yes, that exactly. correct? Um, he's also been a Kansas High School Ag teacher. Uh, you can celebrate now if you want to. Uh, tech Prep Director, Department Chair, Adjunct Faculty at State Fair Community College. Uh, he was the CEO of a Multi-State Academic and Vocational Curriculum Consortium. Uh, that was an award-winning consortium that developed curriculum for, for a variety of educational institutions. Uh, and has been an assistant professor in education at Kansas State and has also continues to be an adjunct uh, teaching classes for Kansas State as well. So he earned his BS in Agriculture and MS in Adult and Occupational Education at Kansas State and his PhD in Career and Technical Education at the University of Missouri. So help me welcome uh, Dr. Bob Perry. Full disclosure, the uh, doctorate's in Practical Arts and Vocational <coughs> Technical Education. Practical Arts and Vocational Technical edu Education. A lot of people go, what, what does that mean? Okay, CTE. So that's the, that's the short. So glad to be here. Uh, he was saying that I uh, am still a adjunct faculty at Kansas State. I think I've recently been told that that ride may be done. It's been a great ride. Uh, I've been teaching an online class for about 14 years on emerging technologies. And uh, it's, it's one of those I love. I love that class. My wife, every semester says, you need to quit teaching this class. It takes too much time, but it's, I love it, and I learned so much from it that uh, I want to do it. And, but they got a new coordinator in the program, and I think he decided that looked like a class that looked fun to teach, so why let Clark do it? So, uh, well, glad to have you here. This is a wonderful group. Man, this is wonderful. Um, just give you a quick overview. Maybe I'm going to figure out how to stand up the way of that. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've done a ton of research on college, and I probably need to put my timer out there. What do I have, an hour? Uh, 40 minutes or so, and, uh, and so uh, th this has been so much fun, learning about the campus. I've read tons, I've, uh, I'm an avid Googler. Uh, I've been looking on Facebook pages, I've been looking at all kinds as I'm looking and trying to find out more about the college. Uh, whoop, I'm opening up the wrong thing. Looks like I'm up here checking my mail, but no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, it, I really have, I mean, this is some of the reading that I've done, <coughs> just going through, and it seems like everything I read and the more I see, uh, the more I like. Um, the one thing that I found <laughs> incredibly helpful after I've done all this, hopefully everybody has seen this video. This is out on YouTube. Wow. Whoever did that did a tremendous job. It's one of those that the four students walked me around campus via YouTube, and I got to see everything uh, that they were willing to show me and just all the different things that I was able to see. It's every, every time I turned around, there were cool things. And uh, it, it, it had actually changed my perception on what I thought I was going to see when I came. Uh, I, I thought, well, you know, <coughs> this, this is a college that uh, I wonder if it's a little older, if facilities maybe are at a point where they need to be improved. It's like, oh no, uh, things are going great. And I, as I read the strategic plan about all the new things coming in, uh, the new performing arts and, and uh, the library renovations and all those kind of things, that to me it just seems exciting. And then also the idea, I don't know if I can pause that, that was the Harlem Shake. I thought that was pretty <laughs> fun that they did. But just the vibrant uh, student life, and to me it all looked uh, pretty exciting uh, to see some of the things you have going on and the, the life on the campus here. So I thought that scene 
seem pretty wonderful. But, uh, so, <coughs> okay, changing gears a little bit here. As we, as we think about community colleges today, I, I think one of the things we have to think is uh, there, there are so many influences that we cannot do what community colleges have always done. We cannot be the same old, same old. It's, it's, just, it's just not happening. Uh, when you look at, for example, the influence of the internet and mobile devices, uh, I, can, I can take my phone and I can learn anything. Do I have the motivation to do it? Maybe not. But I can learn almost anything from my phone. Uh, I think somewhere there's probably something that I can learn to be a medical do doctor if I did my phone. I wouldn't be able to do hands-on and do the <laughs> surgery, but it, I could learn the content. And uh, the idea of what Khan Academy, I, I am, to me, I, I love the concept of Khan Academy. Sorry. The idea that classes are out there. I love uh, the you. I, iPod, uh, I'm actually, is it iPod or Apple University? The I, there is so much stuff out there, and I encourage uh, people to use it. I know in the graduate class, I thought I made them go pull something and talk to us about that, because a lot of them had never seen it before. Um, there was so much good stuff there. Um, even just podcasts and things. Uh, I'll, I'll tell a, a little bit about myself. We, I, I haven't done it near as much, but I used to download podcasts all the time. And one thing I really like is car talk. I don't know if you're familiar with car talk. Um, <coughs> I was driving back from, from Michigan uh, to Kansas City, which is my home. Uh, and we were driving back with my uh, oldest son and middle son. Or no, my middle and youngest son. And so we put on a car talk. And we put on another car talk. And we put on another car talk. We listened to car, car talk podcasts all the way home, 13 hours. And it was like, okay, just one more, just one more. And, uh, and we just kept doing it. Too much fun. But I think those just are going to impact us so much. There are outside organizations that have brought a huge focus on community colleges and what we do. And uh, a lot of it is good. A lot of it is wonderful. But there's, <coughs> there's scrutiny out there at the same time. They're bringing up the, the dirty little secrets like graduation rates, which are horrendous for community colleges as a whole. Um, we just have a, but then the question is, well, are there other factors? And those are things we need to think about. But I think the uh, completion agenda, and we look at uh, a lot of those different efforts. I know we're involved uh, in several of these efforts, and, and there's a lot more that, that are part of what we do. But I think also the idea of, of gaming and especially when we're talking about the young people, how much influence gaming, I'm sorry, am I getting out of your range here of the camera? Uh, on gaming, how, how much that influences people. Um, this, this one right there, how many know of a League of Legends? A few. <laughs> I didn't realize it's so huge. It's one of those, uh, my youngest son who's an engineer, and so he's a geek, he's a, definitely a geek, but one of his friends had played League of Legends all night long, and the next day, when it was time for a final, somebody said, are you ready to go? He said, go where? He said, you got a final in 10 minutes. And he'd been playing the game all night long. Um, my son and his, they play all across the country, so they have this connectivity that they expect. They expect to be able to interact with people all the time, and so, uh, it's, it's one of those, it's just changing the way we do things. Um, you no longer have to be in the same room because we're gonna share the same controller or even if we both have controllers. And this is changing education. And I, I don't know why, like Bill Gates and some of those have not dumped tons of money into some of this. Because uh, I keep looking at some of those things, uh, like, and I'm gonna go back a lot of years, some of you are too young to know Bill Nye, the science guy, <laughs> and I'm thinking, why in the world do we not take some of those federal funds and help us do Bill Nye the science guy for everything? We could do it for microbiology. Get in there, just think of the cool demonstrations and he could explain these things. Then we could incorporate those into our, into our curriculum. Because I figure there is a, a Bill or Belinda Nye out in every one of those fields that we could bring in to, to do some incredible stuff and make us, and make us get excited. Um, and I think the whole concept, I know in the class I teach, the gaming theory and just some of the things, gaming theory is, is changing a lot of college education. Right? The idea when you look at those concepts, it doesn't mean it has to be a game, 
but you take the concepts like random award, re rewards, you know, random rewards, knowing my status at all times. We're not always the best in colleges of helping our students know their status at all times. Uh, that was one thing I loved about mine. We had a proprietary uh, uh, curriculum management system that they could see their grade at any point. They could see their status, and they they didn't ever have to ask me if something was graded. If it's graded, it's online. You know, that's it's all there. And so I think as we look at some of those, that is going to continue to change education. And then I think as we look at uh, the online universities are putting so much pressure on us or opportunities. If we can figure out how to play in that arena, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, it's I, I think. Southern uh, New Hampshire University and Western Governors are both putting a lot of pressure on doing things in different ways, like competency-based education. I, I know that's a real big push with uh, Southern New Hampshire, and I have listened to some of their presentations, and it's like, well, yeah, a lot of that makes sense as we think through and figure out what do we like and not like, and how's that always gonna work? And then, of course, you get the ones that are kind of uh, working in all fields. I, I've heard Khan wants to start his own college so the idea, and it's like, I don't know why he couldn't. I mean, if he could find the right university to partner with, he's got all the content and he keeps building the content, uh, that could put us all out of business. <coughs> I mean, when you look at all these concepts, we could totally change in just a few years on how this is. So as you, as you kind of look at all that and just think, Even though you may not know it today, it is. Whether you like it or not, those are all going to influence what we do. And they are going to influence the decisions that we make. It's, it's going to be some innovation that we're going to have to bring forward. And I think with the idea of doing uh, calculated risk and uh, that you can do, working with your deans, how you can bring some calculated risk into changing some of the curriculum, doing things a little bit different. I, I love the idea that that is the culture here, at least uh, it's the new culture. And I, um, to me, I, I've, and I, I know I've kind of said, I, uh, unfortunately I have way too many good ideas and I have to have people bring me back to the earth every once in a while, but um, it's one of those. So as I look at this, we have got to just figure out how to adapt, uh, how to rise to the top as we do this. And so, uh, pardon me for this, my wife said I need to change East. She said English teachers are just going to shudder as I have me as a leader. And so uh, she gave me instructions to change it and I forgot to change it this morning. So <laughs> my leadership style is what that really says. My <laughs> leadership style. <coughs> so. Move forward. My wife is out controlling this someplace. <laughs> what are we doing on here? Just hold that page. Like that. Turn that. Yeah. Smart board? Could you just hit the smart board up there? I don't know. Does it, I don't I don't use that kind of smart board. Yeah, please, please. Maybe I touched the board. Maybe that was the problem. So try it again now? No. no try. I did try, try that. that. No. Luckily, luckily, I've also practiced an interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, and so uh, I, I do need the costume, though. So I, I think I left it in my car. There we go. Time to go. <laughs> I think he just intimidated him. It just <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, it's, uh, I haven't had that much power with virtually anybody. Even my boys, it's like, uh, oh, if if you have boys, you understand. I, I went through probably a 15-year period in our household where I could not walk down the hall or anything without being punched. Kicked or tackled, because <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, although I did 
continue to pronounce I'm the alpha male in this family, <laughs> which is, uh, they think it's a joke now. They think I'm the grayback in the family. Oh. Uh, <coughs> so, oh well. So, to me, I, I am all about student success. To me, this is what's important. Uh, that's why I love teaching. That's why I love being in academic affairs. Uh, I, love, I love to help people reach new things. And that is, uh, I think I put it right there. Um, this, to me, says so much about your college. And I almost feel like that could be mine to, to transform student lives through empowered and uh, inspired learning. And that's one of those, uh, somebody asked me how I evaluate teachers and when I work with those and when I mentor uh, my faculty that work for me right now. I want them to be that kind of inspired uh, teacher. I want them to be engaged. I want them to get the students excited about what they're doing. I want them to share their passion. Uh, if you're an ag teacher, I want you to share the passion of agriculture to your students. Uh, you don't necessarily have to show the passion of everything, but man, they ought to know that, uh, that you love it and why that's a good thing. <coughs> so to me, that's one of your pictures. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Very little of anything that I have is original. I have stolen almost everything. Let me just say that right <laughs> So, uh, or adapted. Uh, maybe if I adapt, mm -hmm. it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's all about our students. Um, but to me, I wake up every morning with the idea that I get to make a difference because I'm in a community college. And in the role that I'm in, I feel like I am transforming people's lives. And it just, Yes, I, I know I see that every day in Flint, uh, the idea of the lives we transform. Uh, so these are a couple, uh, they're, these are really not their pictures, these are really not their names. I was going to tell a couple quick stories uh, about a couple students, so I, I've got to remember, they're called Bill and Dave. Uh, Bill, Bill was one of our uh, students and he was one of our office workers. Uh, he was a CAD student, he was a really good student, and one day, he, he shared a book with me. He goes, this is the first, I'm sorry, I'm almost gonna get through it. He goes, this is the first book I've ever read, cover to cover. Sorry. And he, it was a middle school sports book. But he goes, that's the first book I've ever read. He was 30 years old. And he was in developmental classes, getting his reading up to speed, and it was just, I thought, oh my gosh, we've changed this guy's life. He went through that and he ended up getting a job. He got paid $30 an hour. He is a professional out in, the, a company hired him not even for what he was training, but he had the, all these good skill, skill sets. He's now going to travel around the country being the expert on that area. This is the kid who never read a book. It's like, oh my gosh, without community colleges that never would have happened. Uh, another, another I, I call him a young man, he was 40-ish. Uh, this this uh, young man, he was one of our automotive students. And uh, I asked him to come in and help on a big project we had going on on a Saturday. He goes, I can't come in. I go, what's the problem? He goes, my parole officer wouldn't understand. I go, do you have to ask him? He goes, no, I have a tether on. Uh, and he would know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And since I was asking him on Wednesday to do it on Saturday, that wasn't enough time. He goes, if, if I would have known two weeks ago, we could have. So that young man, he, he was an ex-felon. Uh, he'd had uh, a tough life. He had made some horrendous decisions um, that he had gone through. We actually hired him to work in our automotive area. Uh, he worked, we actually had him working with customers. Uh, if you did not know of his background, you would have been so impressed. Uh, it's like I would have hired him to do almost anything, maybe except for the thing he uh, got in a felony for. And uh, he ended up getting a job, I think, with General Motors. It's a it's a high end and kind of a research institution. He's going to be one of their technicians. Uh, I mean, that changed his life. That he's he's got a future now. Most felons have a hard time getting to that point, um, and that's because of the community college. We made that that kind of a difference with him. Uh, Positive, I am always positive. Uh, I'm, actually, this is a, a problem that I have. Uh, to me, the glass is full. Uh, there's no half full, half empty, the glass is full. Uh, and I actually did this on our website a long time ago. I said, in the technology division, our glass is always full. And then I tried to do some little things, and people said, Clark, give it up, just so. Um, <laughs> but it, it's like, you know, there is great, great stuff everything there. I am definitely the positive person. I always look for the 
the, the positive outlook on things. Uh, it's one of those, actually people, it's like, Clark, get the smile off your face. You know, this is serious business here. So um, that is definitely one of my one of my characteristics. Whoop, I touched something again. I wasn't even over by the board. No, I did touch it again. <laughs> so obviously I touched the board. So what, Joe, you want to stand over here a second? <laughs> 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 I don't remember what you did when you walked over here. There we go. Okay. You there we go. You guys can see? See, that is exactly what it took. So I'm going to keep this hand in my pocket so I don't touch the board. Uh, I feel like I'm very personable, approachable, collaborative. I, I think my faculty would all say that. Um, it's, it's one of those that my doors open most of the time. Every once in a while I have to close it because I'll have a, a, a project that's got to be done in two hours and if I leave my door open, uh, people will come in and we'll talk about problems and solutions and great ideas they have. And, uh, but I'm, I'm very approachable and, and I like to work collaboratively. Uh, I like to take my ideas and go forward, but also I like to do the other two. Outreach and building uh, relationships, very strong in that, lots and lots of experience. I think unfortunately I have some tables I'm going to force you to, oh actually I was going to say as part of my accident, that in uh, the vice president's <laughs> office they jokingly call me Dr. Wu. Uh, they say it's it's your Wu, and actually I thought it was funny, my, my, pre my vice president, she texted me this morning and said make sure you let them see your Wu. It's like, okay, that's a lot of pressure. But it's one of those, uh, I, I feel like I enjoy working with people. Uh, I enjoy working with people all across campus. I have great partnerships and relationships with them. So, did I touch it again? <laughs> Folks, just yell. Well, we <laughs> try. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, you need to implement a, a, a safety bell. <laughs> There, I see it now. There we go. So I'm not going to read through all these. These are just some examples. Uh, I've, I've done, this is a 90. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're practiced in how to get out of it. Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a 90. <laughs> so, uh, when I was at State Fair Community College, I was a, a tech prep coordinator. Uh, and it was actually really exciting. It was in the early days of tech prep. You know, I probably ought to watch my time, too. And it, uh, we, we ended up getting 90 articulation agreements done. Although I had 13 different area vocational schools were secondary, I had 98 high schools. All of those were in my consortium. Uh, and so we had, we had a lot of great success. We've done a lot of that in the position I'm in now. Almost, all, I think all of our programs have agreements with all of the local high schools and technical centers. And we're even reaching out because schools will call us from quite a ways away. And it's one of those, uh, we just have a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, early college is a, we have one of the first in the country, uh, early middle college. <coughs> um, so it's experience we've had at our college for a long time. Um, the governor has put out a bunch of money that is now available. And so now, all of a sudden, they, they had $10 million, and in the first year, they only spent 500000 It's like, okay, somebody's doing something wrong if you can't spend money. And it was, they're doing that at the secondary. I said, send the money to community colleges. We know how to leverage money and, and make a difference. Uh, really good with advisory committees. This is just some examples of, uh, these are some partnerships in, uh, in universities. And so this is one, an example I've used that I, I think we could easily get here. This is in air conditioning, heat, and refrigeration. Um, Ferris State University in Michigan, they have, they are one of two programs in the country. It is phenomenal. They have a building where everything is exposed, kind of like you are in the tech building or somewhere I, I saw a lot of that. And they, uh, one of my boys, he got our two-year degree, went there and got the four-year degree, and he got a job uh, making about 65000 
And this is the child that um, we kept drawing lines in the state. Well, he was, uh, had learning disabilities when he was in K-12 and had issues. We kept drawing lines in the sand. Don't cross that line. You can't do that behavior. <laughs> that line? And then we draw another line. He go, you mean, you don't mean to do that one either? And he kept going. Finally, we drew one in concrete. We said, if you pass this line, you're out of the house, you're off the phone plan, you're off the insurance, we're still going to love you, you're my son. Uh, and in some cases, I actually still forced him to follow rules, which uh, I was surprised that he did. Uh, but it was one of those, um, that was that child. And it ended up, he came to Mont, he got our two-year degree in that after changing his major four times. And, uh, and he went to Ferris, got the four-year degree, and, and he's going to support his family. And he's going to have a great life the rest of his life. Matter of fact, he just got a, uh, a uh, promotion. Some of you may have seen this before. A promotion where he didn't get any pay increase, but he got a great uh, you know, title. And <laughs> he is, uh, he's, he's now the prototype person for heating, cooling, ventilation, plumbing for Walmart. So all Walmart design. Go in the store, look up in the ceiling, you see that all that duct work and everything, he's the one that will have done the original design work. Now, a local architect will, will go in, and or, or actually he did this before, where they somebody else would customize for that specific location and maybe uh, different codes they have and things. But uh, to me, it's exciting. I mean, I go in Walmart stores, one of the first thing I do is look up on the <laughs> and, uh, and it's exciting. Uh, a lot of other opportunities, I'm not gonna go through all those. Uh, at the bottom, we've got also some really good general articulation where all of our programs, like as an example at Eastern Michigan, can get a technology management degree. So they're like, let's say you were in uh, computing, but you want to run the business and you want to know about HR and you want to know how to do bookkeeping. You can take our IT areas and then you can turn that into a business. And so uh, that's a great opportunity. Here's. Here's some where we have done articulation kind of with ourselves. Um, if somebody comes in with CompTIA A plus certification, which you can do by buying the book, you can do it by working for somebody, you can get that skill set and take the test. We consider those on the left the gold standards. When we prepare you in class, you may not be ready to even take that test. So it would be like uh, taking the in class. Uh, and, and some of those. So if you're able to do that, shouldn't we go back and give you credit? So now with those, if you have that, we will give you the equivalent of that course. If you are signed up at Mott, you're in our program, you're taking classes, we will give you. So, so there you could get that course. Uh, we've done the same thing with several computer courses. These are just some samples. Uh, we're doing it right now in welding. Uh, we're gonna do it with AWS. And again, you could go through welding, uh, you could get a B in class, you could be doing really well, but still not pass the AWS certification in that type of welding. So we have said that's our gold standard. If you can do it, we're actually gonna go back and give you credit for that. So then you can pull that in, and that means you're already a step above. Uh, we're getting ready to do it in automotive too. Uh, it's the same thing. ASC is such a high standard. We have a, a Michigan Mechanical Technician license which is what a lot of our students go for, but if you take that next step and get ASC, we're saying, why would we not give you credit for brakes and, and suspension, or brakes and braking <coughs> system? So, it's hard to not be over there next to the board. <coughs> it's, uh, so partnering, uh, these are just some different groups that I uh, partner with. Um, I, it, to me, it's just part of what I do all the time. Uh, as an example, this group, Michigan Occupational Deans Administrative Council, that's one I've been on uh, for eight years, the whole eight and a half years I've been there. It is where the occupational dean at each of the 28 community colleges, we come together and we talk about CTE, we talk about higher learning commission faculty requirements. Oh my gosh, we talked that thing to death. I imagine you have too. We had at least four meetings where we talked about that and we brought in experts. Uh, we talk about a lot of the Perkins. Uh, and right now I'm, I'm fortunate to be the president of that. I've, uh, this is my second year. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to June. It's like, I finally get to sit down. But uh, it's, we, we get 
that's one of those that is such a great opportunity to come together and collaborate. <coughs> and this is one of those that uh, where people come together and uh, we've got grants that have developed out of that as these people are working and talking about we're doing this, uh, that has happened. We've had some, I think it was uh, MRI technicians or something like that. None of the hospitals in the communities had enough for more than one or two or three interns. And so three or four colleges got together and created a program that goes across multiple colleges. And then that way you can still stay in your community to do the internship, et cetera. Um, one of the things that I just led uh, recently with that is the state was going to take away, we call the local leadership fund. Uh, and it, it, they had already taken away 9%. They were getting ready to take away another 9% from each college, which was uh, going to be half a million dollars. It wasn't going to hurt us. We're a pretty big school. We can uh, absorb things like that. But the little colleges, oh my gosh, they said $9,000 a piece. That's our travel to come to these meetings. That's paying part of the salary and things. And so I did a, uh, I, again, I want to go touch the board. We, we did a activity where we wrote down all of the things they benefited and that were, they were going to lose. And we put this together. Then we ended up drafting a letter uh, to the state on why they should give us the money back. Uh, and so I just sent that this week, so hopefully that was good. Yes, uh, something we're looking for. I'm a change agent, and definitely I felt like I was a change agent when I was in uh, tech prep a long time ago, but to me that's part of my job every day. Uh, and a lot of times I'm helping you change. I'm helping you have a good idea, and we need to figure out how do we get the college to do that. Because too many times somebody says we can't do that, and we stop, uh, and we don't say, surely we could do that, because I, uh, we, we have, I, I don't have time to go into a lot of examples, but um, it's, it's one of those, I help, help the faculty figure out, how can we make this happen? How is that gonna work? Okay, look closely. Oh. <laughs> okay, if you don't see it. <laughs> I figure we may not be at that point at some point, but you know, you might as well dream. Uh, I think they could do distance, distance sports. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, sports speed. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. So uh, I, I am always a champion. Uh, actually, when I started my job as a dean, uh, my boss said, "No, you don't have to be the champion." I said, "No, I am going to be the champion. Uh, I am here to stand up." Now, it doesn't mean I'm always going to agree with them, but I have to be the champion. Um, I am the person that is representing them in so many places, and I'm going to give you a lot of, the, I told somebody about this, this is the car, we bought this new Tahoe because it's a hybrid, and uh, actually I have a funny side story, my faculty wanted to buy a Prius, we are in Flint, Michigan, <laughs> <laughs> So we bought, this cost $45,000 at the time, but we bought it, and then I said, that's going to be our show car. We branded the sucker up, and it's now, uh, actually, my uh, vice president does not like to write, and a lot of other people, it's, I said, I didn't do this for you. I did this for the 18, 20-year-old students that might want to come into automotive. They're going to see it and get excited. It's not made for the 40, 50 year old professional. Uh, so there's an example. These are some brochures. Uh, we, we do all this in-house. Actually, I guess I've done all these working with my family, fac family faculty. Uh, we've, we've put together brochures for each one. These are ones we've done for uh, different initiatives. Like, like something we are really big on is promoting diversity in women in STEM. And the, the back of this document is a whole bunch of jobs and the salaries of what they pay. And parents look at that and go, oh my gosh, my daughter could make that? Yes. Uh, we have, you could take two robotics classes and students could go out and make $20 an hour. That's $40,000. Uh, we have opportunities where they're making uh, $60,000. And they're going, teachers are going, that's more than I make. Yeah. Want to come back to the school? Yes. Uh, we have opportunities. Not that I'm trying to get rid of teachers. So, go get so these are some events uh, we're, we're big. These are all events that we have done ourselves. Uh, so these were just posters for the event. Uh, this is a national event, but we've put together our own activity. Uh, this is the women in STEM. Uh, 
uh, that we've done. Uh, there's one kind of weird up here. This is one I did because I frequently I'm desperate to find people that are highly skilled in their field <coughs> and highly skilled educators and have the appropriate degree like the Higher Learning Commission wants you to have. So we actually had an event and encouraged people to come in and learn what it would be like to be a, a, a teacher. Right now, I actually have uh, a project back with MODAC I just talked about that uh, we're trying to put together a, a grant proposal that could be as much as half a million where they will allow us to go to like nursing conferences and talk to nurses and say, why would you ever want to think about being a college teacher? What are the benefits? You're going to help the nurses of the future. You get to make a difference. And uh, it's, it's one of those we're all pretty excited about. We want to get that done. And so I'm hoping to, to get them. This is actually a little thing that the college does an activity fair. We did this on the first day of school. Uh, we had hot dogs. We had games. We said, we want you to feel like this is where you belong. And so we just did this. Uh, I'm not even sure that I asked permission. I think we maybe did it, and I told the administration to get it. Um, but it's <laughs> uh, we, um, I, I see Dr. Schaefer over there. Yeah, check yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one more. 18 check marks. And one down. <clears throat> so these are, uh, this is an example of, uh, we do a lot of displays when we go out and promote. And this is one at our college night. And so, this is one of those where I went to, to my boss and I said, I want to buy one of these displays because they're like $3,000. And I said, if we want to buy one. And then I had one, I said, I need another one. Uh, <laughs> and then I bought another one. It's not up there. It's a tabletop. But it's like we do so much outreach, go into schools, go into open houses. And then in our building, we get a lot of traffic. A lot of meetings are in our building. So I have one sitting up all the time. I think I have a picture of it here. Uh, whoops. So as an example, this was one that was just there. You can't read it. Those are the names of the program. But all of these pictures are ones I take around the, the classes. Uh, I, I take several hundred pictures a year. I've probably taken several thousand. Uh, and I do it on my iPhone. Uh, I just go in and I get people <coughs> to go, man, those are good. Where'd you get those? It's like, I did it on my iPhone. You can do it too. Um, but we take pictures of students in action because people want to see what are the students doing. What would I get to do if I'm in this program? Um, and one of the things I say too is everything we do is uh, is about marketing. And maybe I'm looking at something different. Oh, okay, this was something I'd said earlier. The, uh, the vice president just told me this uh, last week when I was preparing for this. She said the, uh, the president of our faculty union had told her every dean's description, job description, needed to have marketing. And then she said, do marketing like Clark does. And I was like, wow, that feels good. Because uh, a lot of times they're kind of laughing at me. It's like, oh, back on the shameless promotion. But uh, <laughs> so technology, I love technology. Uh, I have been a, a faculty of this uh, emerging technology class. I'm on our distance learning committee. Uh, our, our college just got approved. Uh, they came in to evaluate one program. We got approved to offer any program. They were so impressed. They said, you get to do uh, any programs uh, that you want to do, uh, all classes, and we, because we have a great infrastructure to, we, uh, you know, you have to have every, besides the class being approved through a process, now you have to have it approved and for you to teach it online. And we have the structure, what are the requirements faculty have to do, and I think it's all, all pretty good. Also, uh, I kind of, a, I'm not a social media like, uh, some people are, but I'm, I do it all very professionally, the social media. Like I have our Facebook page and I have a Mott Dean page and it's one of those to just constantly kind of get people interested in some of the things that are going on. I highly value professional development. Uh, when I was a teacher at K-State, I felt like that's what I was doing every day, was helping young people become teachers. And I love the concept of that. One of the things we do that I really like we have a three-year process that we, uh, the teachers meet once, once a month, uh, and I'm one of the coordinators of one year of that, and so uh, we work with them on how to be better teachers, because I know in my division, a lot of people have never taught. They need so much assistance. They want assistance. Uh, one of my teachers who's been teaching a year and a half, he just asked me if 
I could come by today for an hour that we could. Oh, today's a bad day. <laughs> Couldn't tell them why. <laughs> and uh, so, to me, I, I love professional development. I've done lots of lots and lots of workshops. Probably about a hundred national. Love diversity. Uh, these are two of our students that have. Uh, I, I want to go touch the screen. Here. They have. <coughs> They've won the State Breaking Tradition Award of Excellence uh, since I've been there. And this, this gal looks young. She's got five kids. And going back to the idea that community colleges are changing lives, this is not just changing her life. This is changing the life of her and her five kids. She is going to be an electronic technician. She got a great job uh, with one of the tier two companies. And it's, it's one of those, uh, I mean, it's going to change her life. Um, the other gals, uh, I, can't, I put their real pictures because they weren't stories about them not reading the books. So. Um, navigating the future, uh, this is one of those, I, I think you need to have an academic master plan uh, wherever you are. You need to put this together with your entities and I'll, I'll kind of share, uh, I think I maybe have it there. Um, I was at K-State faculty for a while and when I was there, when I came in, I thought, our curriculum looks cumbersome, it looks repetitive, there were just a lot of things I didn't like it, about it. So what we did, I led the initiative with my cohort who's been there a long time, and uh, what I said is let's, let's look at the things we have control over. We have control over which agriculture courses they take. So I brought in a group of, of agriculture teachers to be my experts, because we're training people to be that first year ag teacher, and I kept saying, first year agriculture. You've taught for 20 years. Don't say you know how to do this and that. What does the first teacher have to have? Then we took and we wrote the ag skills on the wall. We didn't write the classes. We wrote the skills. We wrote what skills do we want them to have when they get done. Then we said what classes at Kansas State meet those requirements. And so we ended up throwing out several classes because we had duplication. We had some they really don't need to know that. Why are we offering that? Yeah, we've been doing it for 15 years. And then we added some in that we needed. Uh, there was probably one or two that I think we wish we would have liked to, but they didn't really have those. Then we did the same thing with our content, the ag education content. We laid it all up on the board. We had them tell it. You tell us what you think is important. And then we threw out a bunch of stuff that they've been teaching for years, and we incorporated some new things. But uh, I, to me, I think teachers own curriculum, and it's, I, I love to help with what can I do to help you, but teachers own, how do we move it forward? Uh, I think there's some goals in there. It's, it's great to have some consistency, at least an evaluation across sections, uh, so that it it's, doesn't seem fair if this teacher is super easy and their, you know, their, uh, their final evaluation is write a report and tell me what you liked about the class. And this one has this cross-reference thing that ties with the NCLEX or this like, oh, how's that even close? So for the sake of our students, I think you want to look at that. I'm not going to go through all those. Uh, so these are just kind of some closing things uh, that I think the vice president has to do. And, and I think I'm, I am all those. I totally believe in your values. I totally believe in your mission. Uh, I, when I read those, it's like if I was on the committee, that's exactly what it would say. Um, knowledgeable, and I've, I know I've talked to people that uh, if I was able to get this job, I would come out to all of your departments. I would want to see your facilities. I want to talk to you. I want to I want to find out from you. And I, I was kind of talking with the deans, too, and I said, you know, I may come back and talk to them, too, but I want to I want to hear from you. What are the what are the things going well? What do you like? How does it, how do things work? And because uh, to me, I think that's critical. If, if I'm going to be your champion, I've, I've got to know. I've got to know what you do. I think this is all, I mean, this is you, but that's me. Uh, that to me, that's exactly what community colleges should be doing. Uh, and then, of course, I want to follow the president's <coughs> goals uh, in increase enrollment, building master plan, and develop employees, which actually I think all those fit pretty well as well. But of course, this is, this is what it's all about. Uh, even though I understand everybody doesn't have to graduate, everybody doesn't have to walk across the stage, but I know that is definitely one way to look at it. Uh, and to me, it just, I love the idea that this is the best job we have. Transform lives. Questions?
I think we've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And there's some websites if you want to look up more on these. This, this one is our Facebook. If you go there, make sure you look at the events and you look at the uh, photos. There are probably a thousand photos on there of students doing things and activities. This is probably uh, not that exciting. Uh, but I don't put pictures of my kids and my dog and things like that on there. Uh, and then this is all of the brochures and things we have are on there. Uh, so if some, the way we like it is that if I'm talking to you, I can say, and actually my business card, yeah, on, the business card. Sure. on the back of my business card, this must be an old one. Oh, this is my one where I don't have PhD on here. In, in Flint, I have two different business cards, one that has PhD and one that doesn't. So when I'm working with the UAW guys, I can do this one. And, and when I'm working with most other people, I can do whatever. So it's, uh, it's like, you know, I, I put, you put up a barrier immediately if I tell them that. Uh, so yeah, so on the back of my card, I've got a couple QR codes that take you back to uh, the Twitter and the Facebook, because those, in my opinion, tell so much more about our program than the, than the other. So, questions? Yes? You mentioned that you have a subject and your idea of something compatible. So I would like you to describe to me the process. Uh, once a faculty member comes to you with an idea, what process do you have in place to make sure that either that idea is considered or it's not sufficient or just that, uh, you know, that was good that they didn't know? What, what is the process you follow? Okay, I, I'm very approachable, very willing to do that. I, I have a 20 page form you fill out. What I want you to do is uh, think it through yourself. Like I say, I'm very approachable. Um, People come to my office all the time with ideas. Uh, and as an example, next what is today? Next week, we're going to become a Mopar Path Local School. So that means we will become a Chrysler Fiat uh, training school. And the faculty brought that forward. They they looked at it. They found the information. They got. Then they came to me. There was no form to fill out. And we looked at. Uh, what would this mean? What are the good things that's going to happen to the college? And, and we just had a conversation. We had some emails back and forth. Why don't we look this up? Because part of it is I knew I was going to have to sell that to my vice president. And so who was going to have to sell it to the president? So we've got to have our ducks in a row to, to make that happen. Uh, we looked at all the things that were great. We, we knew that they only want those schools like within 100 miles of each other. So then we looked and found all the, the fiat or the FCA is what they call it, dealerships within that, that's Dodge, Chrysler, all those, within a 50-mile uh, radius. So we said, look at the impact. If every one of those those dealers hired somebody or sent somebody for us to train, but, so that's the process. We Then we would, we would talk it through and, and try and come up with a proposal. And if it's something that you and I could just implement, we would implement it. You know, if it's not something that has to move forward, uh, uh, if... You know, and sometimes uh, if it's a crazy idea, let's, let's talk it through and decide why that's a crazy idea or a good idea. Because um, sometimes I think then you will come up with the idea that, okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, I gave the example, uh, my, my president actually came to me with an idea. She wanted to have us be a FIRST Robotics team sponsor. Do they do FIRST Robotics here? They're, they're robots about this big, they cost maximum of $4,000, but they're made by high school kids. Um, typically, kids who are going into engineering, it's a, it's a, it's a huge process. Uh, I, talked, I thought about it a little bit. I talked to my faculty, and I got their input. They were very apprehensive for several reasons. So then I went and visited a place where they had FIRST Robotics, uh, and I ended up with a list of about 10 things that were concerned. So then I had to go back to the vice president, or the president, who I knew, was very much in favor of this, and we talked about it for 10 minutes, and she said, good, I'm glad we looked at it, and although she did say, I guess it's not good at this time, so, <laughs> I might have to, so that, that was, uh, that's kind of the way I want to do things, uh, don't have official process, so, other questions? Yes? So, um, obviously you've been pretty successful at Mott Community College, 
What uh, made you decide to apply for this job, and why are you looking to move on? Well, it's it's one of those. I feel like I'm at the, the point of my career that I, I would love to be able to take that next step, uh, become a vice president. I'm kind of limited in technology. With you know, I have uh, a small group of programs, and uh, so I'm a little bit limited there. I would love to get into uh, the next stage, and to me, everything I read about this school. Uh, it seems like the right place at the right time. Uh, I love the leadership and what's happening, the, the building that's going on. There are so many good things. Uh, my vice president had actually been to some workshops put on uh, by people from the school that, oh, I think that's a great opportunity. She's not trying to push me out. Uh, <laughs> but she is very much in supporting like I am of, I want to help you do the, you know, like a, if you want to take a step and become a dean, I want to be supportive of that and, and try and help you get to that. But uh, so to me, this just looks like a great. Uh, it was one of those as I had read the mission and the values and I read all those documents. And because, you know, in the beginning, I was still wondering, oh, do I want to go to Wyoming? I don't know. I've lived in Missouri and Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, uh, and now Michigan. And it's like, do I want to live in Wyoming? And as I looked at everything, I just think it looks like a tremendous opportunity. Plus, uh, another, a side caveat is I think is Cheyenne sits at the top uh, edge of the front range urban uh, corridor. The potential is phenomenal. Now I, I know something that I've read probably five times is we want to maintain our Western culture and, and heritage, but it's like, okay, you can still do that. There's a little difference between the hipsters in IT and uh, you know Western, we'll get them to wear cowboy boots or something. I don't know. Uh, try and get some of the bag. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's one of those I try to be funny and it's like, okay. This <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just, yeah. Um, so lots of great things happening at Old Triple T. We love it, but there's also some challenges that you're facing in, in the coming years. How would you um, support programs um, that maybe face any challenges? I think actually one of the best things that can help you is program review. Uh, because as you go through the program review process, and whether it's a discipline or a career program, you look and you look at the strengths and you look at the opportunities that are out there. Um, I know my faculty, they do not shy away from program review. They see it as an opportunity to say, we're doing kind of a good job, but if we could do this and this and this, things would be great. And we've been able to implement changes because of the pro program review process. So it really can be one of those that's beneficial. Uh, again, uh, I mean, I want to be supportive. I want to help help things move forward. Uh, have I closed programs? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of times they have good reason. We have a fire program that, that I closed. Uh, do I think community colleges have a position in firefighting? Yeah, I think they do, but not in Flint, Michigan. And that was the problem. My advisory committee were even the ones telling me, we had fire program, and we were teaching you how to be middle management of fire. We weren't teaching you how to be a firefighter, middle management. But the, there was a group over here of fire chiefs. Most of them did not have an associate degree. They taught their own leadership classes. They made money by teaching those classes. So you're all buddies with him. So you'd say, no, why don't you go take, you know, just go take that workshop from this person. And so it, it was one of those, why do we offer it? You don't get pay differential. There was, there was just really no value to do it. Uh, also in that program, I didn't have any full-time faculty. Uh, I only had part-time faculty. And it was one of those, this, this seemed like one of the, uh, it, I almost thought about it. It was like, you know, we put our dog to sleep that had cancer that we love, but that seemed like the, the most humane thing, and, it's, and that firefight, I had to cancel classes all the time. It's like, okay, this isn't fair to the students. It's not really fair to the teachers. Let them move on and find other places that they can to do that. So, yes. And what do you think is the best uh, program review process? The one that gives us the best information. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, I think there's a lot of different ones. 
I think you need to find one uh, and, and or develop one that works for your area. Uh, there are some of the, one, one thing that I think you should do that a lot of times I don't see happening, but I think you ought to go visit a couple other schools and see how they do it. Find places that you maybe not necessarily get to go to New York, but find places somewhat regionally that are doing a really good job and go visit them and say, what can we incorporate or some of the things they do? Uh, because sometimes you'll see little things that we've done for 20 years, this is how we always do it. And when you see somebody else, you go, oh, that makes sense. Uh, and, and so sometimes just looking at it from somebody else's eyes can open your doors. But I'd say there's not a best way. Uh, if, if I'm here, I'd sure be glad to help, help work with that in kind of a collaborative form. I mean, I, I think you want buy-in from the faculty as well as something that's going to work for everybody. Um, it doesn't mean it's the one with the most detail necessarily, but it sure doesn't mean it's the real big one. Uh, I think you want the opportunity to, to really evaluate your program. Um, what are you doing well? Now, some are going to be easier. Uh, in the English department, that's probably going to be easier than uh, trying to do a complicated, like nursing. Uh, that's pretty complicated. And so it's one of those that the, the two. Not that equal, both of them aren't equally important, but I think the complexity of the system uh, can, can be involved. And they actually then already go through certification or accreditation, so they're already doing a lot of that. Because it's in there, I would recommend that we tie in with their cycle, so you don't have to do it a second time with tie in with their cycle. Amen. Uh, <laughs> are there places they get to vote right now? <laughs> I think we just excluded some votes. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. So you talk a lot about your interactions with faculty. Can you speak to your experiences with like collaboration in other areas of campus, like student services? Like student services? Uh, I, I've been on uh, committees where we've tried to help streamline processes. Uh, and I, I work with people in student services and in other areas all the time. We do an awful lot of collaborative things. Uh, those, I'm trying to think of a specific example. Uh, when we got a new president, she put together a uh, student task force. And we were trying to look at things from the student's perspective. What are, the, what are we doing right? What do we need to improve? And there we had a whole lot of student services people. We had a few faculty. I think I was the only dean, academic dean maybe. But we, uh, we met every Friday for three hours for at least a whole semester. Uh, yeah, it's painful working with me. I know you just grimaced there. Uh, <laughs> but that's a lot of time. It, it was a lot of time, and we, we had also we had a lot of students on that forum. But we wanted to say, what are we doing well, and what needs to be fixed? Uh, and there were a lot of things that needed to be fixed at our college when our new president came. And so, uh, it, and I thought it was awesome that she was willing to lay it out on the table, and we looked at the good, bad, and the ugly, and there were some things. Uh, that needed to be fixed, and there was making sure those changes. So, I work with other entities. Uh, workforce development. That's not in my area, but we work closely with them because they use some of our lab spaces. Uh, like when I'm not teaching welding, they they can teach welding, uh, but they work collaboratively with my faculty to make sure it, it's always a little bit of a difference because you don't keep the lab as clean as this person would do. Uh, you left tools out. Uh, you broke bits. You uh, so. Uh, that's one of those that's always a little bit of pain. Uh, sometimes we figure out what, I'll, I'll continue with welding as an example. What we ended up doing was we have gas here that's academic gas, and we have gas here that's workforce gas. <laughs> and there's a switch right there. <laughs> and so the oxygen, acetylene, all that, you can just flip a switch. Because it used to be, we'd say, they used up all our gas. How do you know? Uh, now, we know. They, they <laughs> use the tanks, and it's, and it's done that way. So, uh, you know, I've been ignoring the people at a distance. Hello, folks. Uh, it's, uh, they are awake. Got a few ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Any time for any more questions? Yep. There's one. I do have one. Um, you're very strong in technology. Um, what are your thoughts and experiences you know, I, I think it's one of those that seems like it's a, it's a misconception that I'm strong in one that I don't have the knowledge in the other. It's, uh, I, I was a transfer student. I came through a community college. Uh, I'm on a dean's council where we meet uh, twice a month. 
and we talk about all of the things going on on campus. And we look at the issues, we look at developmental education, and we're constantly talking about those. Plus, we have faculty meetings for the whole college, full-time faculty, and they meet once a month. So we continue to talk about this. So I'm very familiar. I'm a very strong supporter of the arts. Uh, it's one of those that, uh, I mean, I want a place where I'm at least within an hour of uh, theater and music. I love music. Uh, come talk to me. I've got a, several thousand, you know, CDs on my uh, phone. Uh, I'll give an example of uh, when my boys were younger. Um, we were part of this phenomenal boys choir. They were called the Stillwater Boys Choir in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oh my gosh, they were great. My wife and I were the president of the Stillwater Boys Choir. So we were selected to get to, to serve in that role. Um, also, we became the financial agents, which was uh, to figure out how to raise money. Because we took, we did concerts in uh, Mississippi, we did them in Texas, uh, we did them in Kansas, and uh, definitely a lot of them in Oklahoma. And uh, they, were, they were highly, highly respected. And I loved part of that. Actually, uh, I probably shouldn't say, it has spoiled me for music uh, after that. Because I, I was used to listening to music like this. Actually, it was so funny. OK, this is going to sound horrendous, but just pretend. Uh, the very, when they're warming up, the very first thing he would make them do is do hootie sounds. And they would go, and I, we were at one place one time where all these middle school choirs were going to compete and everything, and I just saw their teachers go, just by them making the first hootie sound. And it's like, oh. and uh, so none of my boys are in the arts, but uh, they've all been, been involved. Uh, boys were in high school band. I was one of those band, um, not just band parents. Uh, one was in choir, uh, and it, so it's, I, I'm very supportive. And if, you know, if, if we want to look at how to increase arts on campus, I'm sure willing to have those conversations. You know, how do we do more concerts? How do we do more plays? I love theater. Uh, I gave up theater after my one stint. My youngest son, no, my oldest son, he was uh, in theater when he was in second grade, I think, and so. He had done it at school, and he was looking at doing community theater. And so, being the nice dad, I said, okay, if you do it, I'll do it. I'll go with you, we'll be in Bye Bye Birdie. And uh, unfortunately, there were very few middle-aged men who signed up for Bye Bye Birdie. I had 10 different roles. Oh my God, it was terrible. There was one where I'm, I'm standing here as the manager with a cigar, and I slip off, I run downstairs, I change, I put on a doctor's coat, and I step right up because somebody's passed out and I'm helping, helping with this. I'm sure nobody noticed because I was so good. But, <laughs> uh, so, and, and I gave up after that. I was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. That was way, way scary, so. Perhaps on a lighter note to finish with, and maybe not so light, uh, are you comfortable with the breeze here and the coolness? <laughs> you know? What I really like is that you change the, the, the name of your mascot to the Laramie Wind. <laughs> uh, to me, I, I think that's tremendous, and I, I think it says a lot about your school. And, and, it's, uh, and, and I was hoping to get a Wind t-shirt before I left, so. The, the sad part is how many people actually emailed or called me and were like, oh, that's a nice change to your logo, and I'd have to say, realize that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, join me in thanking Dr. Harris. <laughs>